Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to have a first look at FreeBSD. What is FreeBSD? Well, you might think, oh yeah, FreeBSD is another Linux distribution. It's not. The difference between FreeBSD and actually a Linux distribution is that FreeBSD is actually a whole operating system, meaning they are providing you with the kernel, with the drivers, the software, the documentation, and everything else. Whereas in Linux, we have the kernel and the drivers, and the distribution will come up with the rest of the software. That's the main difference between FreeBSD and Linux. There are also some other differences, like for example, the licensing, but the main technical thing is that FreeBSD is a whole operating system, whereas Linux provides you only with the kernel and the drivers. And then, as I said before, you will have distributions like Ubuntu, like Arch Linux, like Manjaro, and so on, who will provide the rest of the packages. So in this tutorial, I'm going to install FreeBSD on KVM and I will just have a quick look on how to install it and how it works and especially how to install and remove packages. So without further ado, let's get going. So let's get going here and install FreeBSD on KVM. Now, I'm assuming you are in Arch Linux, so if you have KVM installed, you can install FreeBSD here so that you can have a first look and you can see how you feel about it. You can also install, of course, on VirtualBox. The procedure is going to be more or less the same, except a few things that I will leave also in the video description below to a document on the FreeBSD website where it explains you what you have to do in case you're installing FreeBSD on VirtualBox. Now, I'm choosing KVM here because performance-wise, it is definitely better. So the first thing we need to do is to decide which ISO we want to download. And I have already the website here open, which is freebsd.org. So if you want, go ahead and look through the website. It's very nicely written and they have actually an excellent documentation on how to install FreeBSD as well. Now to get started with a normal installation here, we can go to download FreeBSD or go to get FreeBSD. I'll click here on download. And now we are asked to choose the image. So most of the time we are going to choose AMD64. So this is what I'm going to do here. And we have several options here that we can download. So we have the boot only ISO, we have the disk ISO or the DVD ISO. So the difference here is that on the disk and DVD ISO, you'll have more packages already available in the medium. Whereas in the boot only ISO, you will basically install everything from the network. In my case, I'm going to go with boot only because I want to install everything from the internet and the image to download is much smaller. Now, I've already done that, so I don't need to do this right now. And I can close this up. So I already prepared my virtual machine. And if you have KVM, you'll know already how to build anyway your virtual machine. I decided here to go with UFI. So let me pull this up and click the start button here and go full screen. So the machine and the installer are going to start in a second. So this is the FreeBSD installer and I'm going to hit enter here to start the installation. Now, this is going to be a little bit strange because during the installation, actually, the monitor is recognized correctly, but the installation process is going to hang very soon during one function. And this is the function SMBus0. So what we need to do here, we actually need to change to the serial port. So we need to go basically here to KVM and close this down then go to view and go to text console and select serial one now there is nothing here now let me go here to the view menu and take out the toolbar but if i hit enter the installer is starting now we can proceed here with the installation of FreeBSD. so we can hit install and we are asked to select our key map so i'm going to scroll down here and select mine which is the swiss keyboard here with accents and I can go on the top section here and click continue. Give a name to this machine. I'm going to call mine KVM free and then hit OK. Now, here we can select the distribution components we want to install or not install. So in my case, I'm going to go with the defaults, but I'm going to install also the ports tree, which is going to help me install also some other modules afterwards. And then I can hit enter. Some installation files were not found on the boot volume. The next few screens will allow you to configure networking. That's fine. So we can just hit enter. And this is a network adapter I have in the virtual machine. So I can hit enter here. And I do want to configure IPv4. So I just hit yes. And I want to configure also DHCP. So I hit yes. And it's going to take a moment to do this. 
I don't need to configure IPv6, so I go for no here and hit enter. By the way, I'm moving here with the arrow keys and hit enter. And for the resolver configuration for the name, I'm just going to put in something here like kvm.psd. And DNS1 is fine. And for the DNS2, I'm going to put here just an example 8.8.8.8. .8 and I'm going to hit OK. Now, we're going to select the mirror. So you can scroll down here the list of countries. I know there is one mirror for Switzerland. There you go. And hit OK. And now we can select the partitioning. So we can go here for automatic, manual. We can open the shell and do it there. Or we go for automatic ZFS. I'm going to go this time just because I want to make it simple here to auto. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I want to use the entire disk. So I'm just going to select the first option here. Now we can select the label we want to use. In my case, I'm going to use here the GPT label because it's a UFI system. I could use also the BSD labels, but this time I'm going to go for GPT so I can hit OK. And this is fine for me, so I'm just going to hit finish here and commit. Now it's going to connect to the server here and download and install the base packages. So I'll be back when this is done. So we are asked now for a new password for the root user. So let me enter this very quickly and retype it. And now we can select our time zone. So let's go to the time zone. You can select, of course, yours. I'm going to select here mine, which is down here. And CEST for abbreviation is fine, so I can hit yes. I'm going to skip the time here and the date because anyway, it's correct. And now I can go with the system configuration. So what I want to do here, I want to enable several things. SSHT is already enabled. I want to enable also mouse D to have my mouse or trackpad working. I want to enable also NTPD to synchronize the system and the network time. And I don't actually need power D because this is a virtual machine. So I can hit OK. And now we can select the options for the system hardening. So here we have several things we can enable or disable. For example, on a normal installation, I would probably disable reading kernel messages buffer for unprivileged users. And the same also for process debugging. But because this is a throwaway machine, that's fine for me. So the only thing I want to do actually here is to disable send mail because I will not have a mail system in here. And I will let rest as it is. So I just hit OK. And I would like to create a new user. Yes. So the username, in my case, my name, the full name, and UID, we can leave empty for the default. This is the user ID, and it's going to be selected by the system automatically. Logging group is going to be also automatically selected, so we can let this empty, so we can just hit enter. And we can invite this user to another group. I actually do want to do this. I want to invite this to the wheel group because I'm going to configure this later for the pseudo privileges. And then we can hit enter. Login class, I will let the default. Same for the shell. And also the home directory and the home directory permissions. Now, use password-based authentication, yes, so we can hit enter. Password empty, no, as a default, so we can hit enter. And random password, also no, so we can hit enter. And now we can select the password for the user and retype it. Lock out the account after creation, no, as a default, so we can hit enter. And now we can write the user to the system by hitting Y and hit enter. I don't want to create other users here, so I can type in N and hit enter. And we go back to our installer. So the basic installation is actually done. So if you have some things that you want to adjust here, you can go ahead and do that by selecting the menus. But in my case here, I just want to exit and apply the configuration, so I'm just going to hit OK. So depending on the machine, this is going to take some time. So be patient here until the next dialog comes up. There you go. So the installation is now finished. Before exiting the installer, would you like to open a shell for manual modifications? I would say no for now. So I just hit enter here. And I want to reboot the machine, so I hit reboot. And the machine is going to reboot now. So I go back now to the graphical console. And as you can see now, I actually can put back the toolbar and go full screen. Now the machine is rebooting and we are now in the boot menu. So we can hit enter to start the new system. And this time it should boot actually up fine. So we're going to take a moment here and then we will be asked to enter the username and the password. There you go. So I'll enter the root name here. So root 
and the password because we need to still configure the system. So let's clean this up. I see it's working fine and the mouse also in the system is working fine and the keyboard as well. So that's already a good sign. What we need to do now is to actually build up our desktop environment. Now I will leave a link to the desktop environment manual on the video description below so that you can choose the one you want to install. There are also the instructions there on how to activate all the components. However, before continuing, let me just briefly tell you how the system startup works in FreeBSD. So as opposed to the Linux distributions that uses, for example, System 5 or System D, FreeBSD uses actually the traditional BSD style in it. So under this style of init, there are no run levels, there are no init tab or such a things. The startup is controlled by RC scripts. So basically what this means is that when your system boots up, the RC script reads the rc.com file and the rc.com file under defaults to determine which services are to be started. So that means, for example, to enable GDM or STDM, you're going to have to go into the rc.com file and enable the service there so that when the system boots up, the RC script can boot up the service directly. This makes the whole init system a little bit faster compared to a traditional Linux init, and you can definitely feel it, especially if you're installing this on real metal. So let's go ahead now and install some packages that we need for our installation. Now, the package manager in FreeBSD is called PKG, very simply. And the first package I want to actually install is sudo. So to install it, because it's not installed by default, I can type in now install sudo, and it enter. Now, the package management tool is not yet installed on the system, so we want to install it now. I will type in yes, and it enter. And it's going to install that first, and it's going to take a second to do that. There you go. And now we can type in y, and it enter. There you go, and let me clean up the terminal. Now, Vim is not installed in FreeBSD, so we need to use the by sudo command to change the settings for the sudo privileges. So let's type in by sudo, and hit enter. And we basically scroll down here again to the wheel group we talked about before, which is right here. And we delete the hashtag here, and then we can save the file and exit V. And this is done. So let's clean up the terminal. Now, the command to remove a package is pkg remove, and then the name of the package itself. It's a very simple package manager, and until now, when I tried it out, it worked always very reliably. So the next step would be actually to install the components we need for the desktop environment, meaning the display server, a display manager, and the desktop environment itself. So we can install these all at once. So let's type in install. Display server is xwork, as you know. And for the desktop environment, it depends, of course, on which desktop environment you want to install. In my case, I want to go for KDE. So I want to install first SDDM because it's Display Manager. And I'm going to install also KDE 5, which is going to include everything in KDE, including the applications. And one component for SDDM I want to install is Plasma 5-SDDM-KCM. And then we can hit enter. Now we can press Y and hit enter to start the installation. Now this is going to take some time because it has to basically download, extract and install the packages. So be patient here and I'll also wait here of course and I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the packages are now installed. Now there are still a few steps we need to do before we can actually reboot the machine. First we need to actually enable the services we need. And we need to actually configure also Xorg to work with KVM. Now, if you're installing this on a laptop or on a PC, you can probably skip this step. But if you're installing on KVM, you might have to do it because otherwise the video driver will not work correctly. So let me clean up the terminal and type in Xorg dash configure. And hit enter. And what we need to do, basically, we need to copy this xorg.conf.new file into the local Etsy x11 directory. So to do this, we can type in cp and then xorg.conf.new and we can copy this in under slash user slash local slash etsy slash x11 and the name of the file is xorg.conf and then we can hit enter. Now we need to edit this xorg.com file to make sure that the KVM machine uses the correct video driver. So to do this, we can type in v and then slash user slash local slash etsy slash x11 slash xorg.conf and hit enter. 
And we need to basically go down here to the device section and change the driver here from mode setting to SCFB, to the SC frame buffer. So we can type in here, SCFB, we close the double quote, and then we can save the file and exit V, and this is done. Now, we need to enable the services we need for KDE. Now, on FreeBSD, there is a specific sequence of things we need to do, and the first one is to enable the scripts we need. If you're not comfortable working with V, you can install also Vim in FreeBSD by typing in pkg install Vim and hit enter. Type in the Y here and it's gonna take a second here to download and install. There you go. And now we can type in Vim slash Etsy slash rc.conf and hit enter. Now, this is the file where the services are going to be defined and the RC script is going to read from here when the machine boots up. So what we want to do here, we're going to enter insert mode and enter a few lines. And the first one is dbus underscore enable equal double quote, yes, double quote. So KDE uses dbus and also the HAL service for a message bus and hardware abstraction. So we need to enable both. So dbus is enabled. Next, we are going to enable the HALD service. So we can type in HALD underscore enable equal double quote yes and double quote to close. And last but not least, we need to enable also STDM, our display manager. So we can type in STDM underscore enable equal double quote yes and then double quote again. Uh, let me just delete these last two lines here. There you go. And let's save the file and exit Vim. Let's clean up the terminal and the last step we need to do before we reboot the machine is to also mount the proc directory because it's required for KDE. So let's edit our fstab file by typing in vim slash etsy slash fstab and hit enter. And we'll go down to the last line here and we enter a new line and the device is proc and the mount point is slash proc. The file system type is proc fs. The options are read and write, and the dump is zero, and the pass is also zero. Then we can save the file and exit Vim, and clean up the terminal. Now, we are ready to reboot the machine, so let's type in reboot, and hit enter. Now, the disk is syncing, and this is done, and uptime was 20 minutes, and now it's rebooting. It's going to take a second, and we are going to be back in the boot menu. There you go. Now, we can hit enter. And if everything went well, we will be greeted by the STDM Display Manager. There you go. Here we have STDM. So we can enter our password and hit enter. And we are now in the KDE desktop and the resolution is also fine. That means the video driver is working correctly. So let's check here our installation. You can see the difference, for example, between Linux and FreeBSD. In Linux, you can choose whether you want to have everything installed in KDE. In FreeBSD, when you install the KDE 5 package, it's going to install basically everything what's available in KDE. So for example, here in the internet section, we have lots of programs. We have also Kmail, for example. We don't have a browser. This we can install it manually anyway. Under Office, we don't have LibreOffice, but we can install this, of course. But all other programs required for KDE are already installed by default. So let's type in here console. And let's go full screen here, and I will increase also the font size. So to update the system, we need to type in now sudo free bsd-update, and then fetch to fetch the updates. This corresponds basically to an apt update command in Ubuntu. Now we can hit enter and enter our sudo password. And it's going to check now for updates, basically. And this is going to take a moment. So as I said in the intro, the difference between Linux and FreeBSD is FreeBSD is not a distribution. FreeBSD is an operating system. So it basically has everything inside. It has a kernel, drivers, software, documentation, all comes with it. Whereas Linux is actually coming only with a kernel and the drivers, and it requires third party to build the distribution on top of it. So Arch Linux, for example, is a distribution 
because it takes the kernel of Linux and its drivers, and then it builds on top of those. And the same goes for other Linux distributions. So here we have basically a whole OS. It's maintained by FreeBSD. All the packages, all the system is installed at once, basically. And it's a completely different approach from Linux. By the way, the licensing terms also for FreeBSD are also different from Linux. Linux has a copyleft GPL, whereas FreeBSD uses actually a permissive BSD license. So this is also to keep in mind. Now, the system updates here, it seems like it takes long, but what it's doing here, basically, it's fetching the updates and prepare them to be applied to the system. Then once those are ready to install them, it's going to take like one second. So it's kind of a different approach on how we can update the system, but it works very reliably. I've been using now FreeBSD for the last couple of days, and the difference in speed, actually, is quite noticeable. KDE especially, because it's a desktop environment which requires a lot of resources, it's quite heavy. Nevertheless, with FreeBSD, it's actually very snappy. So here we can quit out of this, and we can pull up basically the last command here with the up arrow and replace fetch with install, and hit enter. And now it's installing the updates and you will see it's really going to take like a couple of seconds and then it's going to be done. There you go. The updates are now installed. So we have an up to date system. Now we can clean up the terminal and close this up and let's have a look at the info center. Let's type in info. And as you can see here, we are on KD Plasma version 5.19.2 and the kernel version of FreeBSD is now 12.1 release. So it's the latest one available and it runs really smoothly. So again, the packaging system here in FreeBSD is very simple. Let me increase the font sizes again here. So through this, we can type in sudo pkg install Firefox, for example, and hit enter. Enter the sudo password. And it's going to check the repositories. Now we hit Y and hit enter to install Firefox. It's going to take a second to do this. There you go. And Firefox is now installed. Now, if we go here to the launcher and we type in here Firefox, we'll see we have the Firefox browser in here for us, ready to go. And there you go. We can close this up. Now, to remove a package here in FreeBSD is also very, very simple. So to do this, we can type in sudo pkg remove Firefox and hit enter. Proceed with the installing the packages. Yes, and hit enter. And now this is done. So if we go back again into the launcher and we type in here Firefox, it's not anymore available in the system. So all in all, this is a quick overview on how you can install FreeBSD on KVM. Now, if you want to try out FreeBSD and see how it works for you, KVM or a virtual machine like VirtualBox, for example, it's a great way to start up and see if you like the system. And there is no better way to find out than trying out for yourself FreeBSD to see how it fits your workflow. So there you go. This is the basic installation of FreeBSD, in this case on KVM. So far, I have to say I like FreeBSD. It's very fast, even on a virtual machine, it feels very fast. But of course, this is just a first look and I will keep using it now for a while on a virtual machine and see how I feel about it. And eventually I will do a more in-depth video in the future. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.